Okay, looks like it's 7.30, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to be on using the microphone. I know it's just, it's a pretty small group in here, and it's informal, but we do have a, a go to webinar as well, so it's going to allow us to be able to communicate with everyone. I just want to thank everyone that's uh, attending virtually, as well as uh, the folks in here. Uh, this is a very important process, and once we ultimately adopt our district map, or a new district map, it's going to be our map for the next 10 years. So. Thank you for being a part of this process. We can't go through this process without the public's input and all the feedback that you're going to provide. Um, so just to provide some background, uh, we've been going through this process with National Demographics Corporation and Jeff Simonetti is here from National Demographics. Uh, since early 2021, we've had two public hearings uh, and that's per the requirements of what is called the Fair Maps Act. And that's been the instructions really to the cities on how they're going to redraw their voting district lines. And so we've gone through two public hearings out of four that are required. The first two have really focused on the process we're gonna take, the redistricting process, and then also on communities of interest and neighborhoods. And so through those two public hearings, we took public input and we ultimately had the five areas that you'll see on your map in blue and also will be presented uh, through the, uh, the PowerPoint that Jeff's gonna go through. Um, now, those areas, they, that really reflects um, these areas that we, to the extent that it's feasible, we want to try to avoid drawing a voting district line across because we don't want to cut across the community of interest. Now, again, that is to the extent that it's feasible and that we can ensure a population balanced map. Um, now, it's not to suggest that anyone here can try to preserve additional areas, um, that you guys certainly can. It's just that these are areas that through two public hearings, our community and council collectively decided were areas that we want to try to preserve. Um, and so with that, I'll uh, hand it over to Jeff. Uh, Jeff's been really assisting the entire Chino Valley area. He just came from a Chino Valley Fire District uh, meeting, and he's also helping Chino Hills, so he knows our entire community pretty well. He's going to jump into the presentation and also go um, into our public mapping tool, uh, District R, and kind of the things that we need to look for as we're drawing these new voting district lines. So can give it to Jeff. It's not on. Ah, it's green now. It had a, it had a light on, but it has to be the green light apparently to make it work. All right, can everybody hear me now? <laughs> Perfect. All right. So my name is Jeff Simonetti with the National Demographics Corporation. We appreciate you guys coming out this evening, and this evening's workshop will be a lot more informal than uh, the past uh, council meetings. So we're going to do a two parts here. We're going to go through the public mapping tools, the the presentation here. Going to go through a couple of items related to the communities of interest that Jack was talking about and talk about next steps and deadlines. I'll stop for questions at that point and then we will go through the um, online mapping tool District R, show you how that works and then we'll stop for questions there again. All right. My, I'm hitting next. Let's see. There it goes. Now it works. All right. So the purpose of tonight's workshop is to review the redistricting process, and we'll talk about the district lines, the current district lines, and things to consider as you are going through the process of looking at how we're going to redraw the lines. And you, as uh, Jack mentions here in this slide, so for those of us who are joining via GoToWebinar, feel free to send us written messages or questions via the GoToWebinar or by selecting the raise your hand icon to verbally ask questions. Uh, see that below. The icon is right here. When we talk about the redistricting process, there are a couple of main rules and goals that really govern the process and govern the reason as to why we have to go through the redistricting process here. And we put these into three main buckets and categories. So the first one is on the left-hand side, which are the federal laws that govern this. And particularly, it's with the Federal Voting Rights Act. The Federal Voting Rights Act has two main components. First is that districts have to have generally equal population. And when we say generally equal population, they don't have to have exact 
roughly the same numbers of, of population in. But there's been case law that's associated with the process and says that there can be no greater than a 10% deviation. And when we talk about population deviation, that means the difference between the smallest district and the largest district in terms of a percentage. As you'll see here in the next couple of slides, the population has increased pretty substantially within the city and it hasn't increased in the same relative manner by districts. So there are some districts that are significantly larger than others right now as a result of the 2020 population in the existing districts and the city of Chino with its current districts is out of population balance as we associate here. So that's the main driver as to why we have to go through the redistricting process. In addition, the Federal Voting Rights Act also talks very specifically about having no racial gerrymandering. Since the city of Chino went into the districts uh, back in, it was 2017, 16, excuse me, uh, in 2016, there's been a new law that's passed called AB 849. And that was, that specifically sets up California criteria for the cities. That's in the second bucket. And the important thing to remember about the California criteria that come out of the Fair Maps Act is that they are rank ordered. And they are rank ordered in the following order. First, districts have to be geographically contiguous, meaning they can have no islands that are disconnected. They have to have undivided neighborhoods and communities of interest. And we talked about that at the first two public hearings. And those are the areas that you defined as where practicable, you would like to keep those areas together in one district for purposes of effective and fair representation. The districts have to have easily identifiable boundaries and they have to be compact. And when we say compact, that means that you do not bypass one group of people to get to a more distant group of people. Finally, on the right-hand side, we have the other traditional redistricting principles that we follow. And there are a few important ones to remember here. When we talk about respecting voters' choices and continuity in office, as well as minimizing voters shifted to different election years, there are two components to how we go through the redistrict process. First, we actually draw a physical map and the city council votes on that. Second, we put together an election sequence. As you know, the council members have staggered elections. So some council members are up in 2022, some council members are up in 2024. And through the redistricting process, you can determine which one of those uh, elections are up in each cycle. It's called the election sequence. Let's say, for example, you're currently in a district that votes in 2022, but you were your lines would get moved and you now get put into a 2024 district. We try to minimize the number of people that are shifted between different election cycles. Finally, an important component in, in this city, considering the development that you've had, is taking into consideration future population growth. So we know, for example, that there are some areas in the city, particularly the preserve and parts of College Park, that still could have some pretty significant residential development. You can slightly underfill that district or districts, knowing that, uh, you're, that the population is going to increase over the next 10 years. The population deviation still has to fall under that 10%, so you can't make that greater than 10%. But if you keep that within the population deviation, you can slightly underfill those districts, knowing that those districts are gonna essentially grow into themselves over the next 10 years. So you'll see here, uh, this is the 2021 redistricting data, and this includes the 2020 census population, but within the existing districts. So you'll see here that the total population is 86,573. And you'll see here too on this area, there's a couple of important components. You'll see here the deviation from the ideal and the percentage deviation that we have here. The way that you calculate deviation is we take the ideal number. And what, is, what, is, what does that ideal number mean? Essentially what that is, is you're taking the total population and dividing it by the number of districts, which is four, okay? And you'll see here that the largest district currently is District 4 at 25,681 residents, and District 1 is the smallest district with 18,131 residents. 
the difference between the largest district as a percentage off of the ideal versus the smallest district is how you get your total deviation, which is right here at 34.88%. So obviously that's above the 10% threshold, which is mandating why we have to go through the redistricting process. One other important thing that I want to point out too is that when you see here, for example, we say, okay, this is 18, or excuse me, below 16. 0.23% below deviation. Does that mean that districts one and two shrunk? The answer to that question is no. It just means that on a relative basis, districts three and four grew at a significantly greater pace than districts one and two did. But your population increased over from 2010 to 2020. Another couple of visual representations too that we want to show is the comparison between uh, the citizen voting age population from 2016 to 2021. And so the next couple of slides here that we'll show, show visually what your citizen voting age population is by census block. And you can see the comparisons here. So on the right hand side is the 2016 citizen voting age population and that used the 2010 census data. And here on the left hand side, we have the 2021 numbers that show the, the new census data. As you can see here, uh, there's still significant concentrations of uh, Latino citizen voting age population in districts one, three, and, and four in particular, um, and in very particular in the uh, downtown area of, of the city. Here is your Asian citizen voting age population, again, uh, 2016 on the right, 2021 on the left. And for all of the demographics here that I'm going to show you, the purple and bluish colors are uh, lower percentages for a particular demographic, and the yellow and, and reddish colors are higher percentages. And again, you can see uh, that there has been some increases in, in Asian American citizen voting age population, particularly in the uh, preserve community. So uh, these census blocks here right uh, north of Pine Avenue there, kind of in between Pine Avenue and the, the Chino Airport. We also talked about communities of interest and this was the, di the district areas that the city council at the both July 6th and September 7th public hearings essentially codified through a resolution to say, these are the areas that we want to identify as communities of interest um, for keeping them together where practicable uh, in one district for its purposes of effective, effective and fair representation. And there were five community areas that they identified. The first on the north is the areas north of the 60 freeway that are generally rural and have more of an agricultural community. Uh, then we have downtown Chino. And as you'll see here, the way that the current districts are drawn is that downtown Chino is split and Central Avenue is the dividing line there and it's divided between districts one and three currently. Park East is uh, in district four and then College Park in district three and the preserve currently in district four. So the only community of interest that's currently split by existing districts is downtown Chino. Finally, we have the next steps. So let's talk about what the remaining hearings are. We're required to have at least four public hearings and we've had two so far. The third hearing, uh, we will be considering draft maps um, and we'll be asking you to submit your maps if possible by Monday, January 23rd, or excuse me, January 3rd for inclusion in the January 18th hearing. That will be the third hearing. We'll go through draft maps and get feedback from the council and, and review to say, and, and general public to say, here's what we like, here's what we don't like, and NDC, can you go back and revise these maps? We'll have a fourth public hearing to select the final map on February 15th. And then there'll be ordinance, the, the process of redistricting to actually codify that goes through an ordinance, which requires a first reading and a second reading. So March 1st will be the uh, introduction to codify the new district map on March 1st. 
second reading of the ordinance will be on March 15th. And the important thing to remember here too is that the process has to be completed by no later than uh, April 17th to be able to be included in the and submit to the San Bernardino County Registrar of Voters to be able to be eligible for the November 22 elections. And as Jack was mentioning at the beginning, remember that November 22 elections and beyond for the next 10 years will be uh, subject to the new maps that, that we uh, approve here through this process. So with that, that concludes the presentation portion of uh, this evening's workshop. Are there any questions in particular that are associated with what we've gone through so far? Yes. Are you using? Oh, okay. When you're using your demographics for the population, hmm? you're including non-residents in the unincorporated areas. We're not including non-residents in the unincorporated. I didn't see where you took those areas, those islands, out of your map. Is what I'm saying. Yes. So uh, you'll you'll see here and see, see these see these jagged lines here on the top. That's that's the yes. That's the the. It, it does not take into consideration the county unincorporated pockets. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions associated with the presentation? Uh, and I could probably help answer this one. We received a question online. It says, are there any proposed maps of what the new districts will look like? Um, the answer to that uh, right now is is no, there, there are no uh, maps. Right now we're going through the process of drawing the maps. So you know, really the, the purpose of tonight's uh, workshop is to look at the mapping tools that we have posted online um, just to help people kind of Move, move that along, be able to get in there and start drawing proposed maps. Uh, we will take a look at those proposed maps uh, at the January 18th public hearing. Um, and at that point, we'll take a look at everything that's been received. And um, the goal is to hopefully narrow that down. So at this point, we don't have any uh, draft maps yet. And, and that's, that's a good question. And the Fair Maps Act makes very specific that we have to have two public hearings prior to considering any draft maps. So we've had those two public hearings, which will allow us at the third hearing in January to start considering maps. But it's it's very specific within um, the the Fair Maps Act that you cannot consider maps, uh, draft maps until the third public hearing. Um, and then I have uh, one individual online, uh, Heather, who's indicated she wants to speak. So Heather, I'm going to go ahead and unmute your line. Okay. Hello. Um, I just had just one question. Um, if citizens feel that the maps are not fair, can they challenge them? And for example, if they challenge them, can they, for example, collect signatures and bring it to an election of maps? Um, it, it's, it's, I would have to go back and ask the city attorney is with that, but again, this is something that, uh, that there's a there's a public process associated with this, and we have multiple council hearings to to consider what those maps are. Uh, and NDC's job is to make sure that uh, the maps that are considered are are follow the both the federal and state voting rights laws. And so that's that's something that we will conduct through throughout this process. Okay, thank you. I think that those are the only questions I see online. Um, I just wanna make sure, is there anyone else online that would like to ask any other questions before we move on to looking at the mapping tool? Um, I think that's that's it. If if I if you have any other questions, please feel free to submit them or or indicate with the raise your hand icon. All right, so we will transition over to uh, the district R. Okay. Um, um, let's see. It seems to have frozen my my keyboard. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Yep. 
so we're all well set and now let's just transition over to district r Ah, okay, perfect. All right. So, um, to be able to access the online mapping tool, please go to, you'll see here, cityofchino.org slash redistricting. And when we click on that, that will take you to the home page. Okay. And so, here is, you'll see here, the link to the public mapping tools. And you'll, there are a couple of different links here. So there's you, the District R mapping tools right here. We'll go through how to do that. And there's instructions that are uh, that that are here to to walk through. And, and we're, we're going to again walk through this in, in full detail. And then here is where you'll go and if you want to see the public gallery and see where everyone where all the other maps have been submitted you'll click on this so let's go there okay so this takes you to the chino homepage for the maps and there's a couple of different points so you'll the purple box is if you want to draw the districts you'll click on that you can also, uh, if there's a particular community that was not included in in the, the communities of interest process, but you'd like to identify, you can click here on this sort of orangish red color box, and that will allow you to draw a community as well. Once maps are submitted, you'll see here, and there's the public gallery, all maps that are submitted will be there. And let's say, for example, uh, you had a map that you uh, half finished, but you said, eh, I want to finish that up later. It, you can save that half completed map and that will show up in the works in progress. So everything that uh, gets either submitted as either work in progress or public gallery will all be right here. So let's start and show you how to draw your districts. So when you click on that the map, you will get, you'll see here, a, a blank map of Chino. And there are a couple of different items here that are associated. So there are three main tabs. Here you'll see, this is your population tab. And again, remember how we talked about the ideal population. So again, that's just taking your total population and dividing that by the number of districts. And you'll see as we start filling in the map that will that will show up. We'll get to the evaluation tab. Um, that's something that we use at the end because uh, that only shows data once you actually and it, it, it moves interactively as as you fill in your map. And then we have data layers. So there are a couple of different layers here that we can show you. So for example, if you wanna see where the current districts are, you can uh, toggle that on and off. And then there are your demographic data. So let's say, for example, you wanna see the citizen voting age population for Hispanics. And, and if you click on show citizen voting age population, it will show you uh, where those are by census block. And again, you can, you can toggle that on and off and you can leave what whatever you have on uh, as you're drawing your map so let's say for example you wanted to see where the hispanic citizen voting age population was while you're drawing your map you can leave that toggled on i'm going to turn that off for now but we also have some additional demographics so this comes from what's called the american community survey so when the census gets handed out Every single every single household gets a census survey. I believe it's one in 15 or one in 17 residents get what's called the American Community Survey, and that asks for additional data related to things like do you have children at home, what's your income, uh, what languages are spoken at home, and that's where we get the data here from additional demographics. So, for example, you can see things like 
uh, what percentage of people are high school graduates, what percentage of people are college graduates, um, income levels, and those types of things. And again, uh, these can be toggled on and off, and the and you can see again the percentages um, a, as you're as you're going. So I will toggle those off for now, and let's draw a map. So there are four main tools. This is your zoom in and out. The hand here is your pan tool to go back and forth and you can zoom in and out or go to a particular area. And then let's say we are ready to draw districts. So you'll click on the paintbrush. And you'll see here that there are four different uh, colors and four different squares that correspond to the four different districts. The active one will turn into a circle. So now I'm going to be drawing the blue district. Okay. And there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can either click one by one on your census blocks. And as you can see here, see in your population, as you fill in your district, the population will continue to increase. See now it goes up to 747. The other thing that you can do too is if you want to uh, fill in large, larger areas, you can hold your mouse down and anything that you hover over will add into the district that you have active. Okay, so keep adding those in, adding those in. And as you can see, the more that you add in, your population continues to go up. Okay, so now let's say, for example, oh, you know, I put too many people into, into this district and I want to take some of them out. You'll go to the erase tool and the erase tool does the exact opposite of what you just did. So again, you can either click by census block or again, you can hold it down and that will remove the population that you added in. Okay. And you keep doing this for each one of the districts. So let's say, for example, I want this area to be the yellow part of the yellow district. I want some of the area around Chino Airport to be the green district. And again, I'm just showing this for for purposes of how to draw. I'm, I'm, we're not not going to be population balanced here, but um, and then let's say I want to put some parts in the middle into the olive colored district. Okay, so now we've got four districts drawn, and there are a couple of important items to see here. First thing that you'll see here is it will give you um, what your unassigned population still is. So air, it'll show you areas that you have not put into a district. So, so you, you can see here, I still have 17,576 residents still need to go into a district. That should be, when you're finished with your map, this unassigned population should be zero. And there are going to be a couple of instances here where you'll probably see that there are some very, very small census blocks, and they're easy to miss. So this is an important tool here. You'll see, highlight unassigned units. And when you click on that, that shows you some of the areas that you have missed. And let me give you an example. So you can see here, uh, I missed these areas. And you'll see, see how small some of these census blocks are, for example? The census block here is the freeway, okay? And that's just 
how the U.S. Census Bureau draws their census blocks. We have no control or no ability to, to, to change that. That's how they do it. But when you see that in bright red, it's very easy to see that you have missed that. And then you can go in. I want to put that into the teal colored district. And you click on it. And that adds that into your district. Okay. One other thing too that I want to show you before I go to the two more things that I want to show you on 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 this area before we go over to the evaluation tab. Let's say, for example, um, I've drawn this area in the green district, but I really want to put it into the yellow district. What you'll do is you'll click on the yellow district and anything that you click on that is on your your active district which again turns into the circle will go from whatever district it is or if it's unassigned into that new district so see for example this census block right here is currently in the olive district if i click on it with the orange that's activated it will put that into the orange district okay and you can again do that do that vice versa say um you know oh i really wanted to put that back into the to the green district that will work vice versa an important thing to remember here too um this is a a nationwide tool that we use um and some areas determine population deviation differently than uh than the way we do here when it says max population deviation, it gives you the maximum population deviation of the largest district from the ideal. But the important thing to remember again is the way that we need to determine population deviation is the smallest district to the largest district. So remember that when when you're and and if we need to go through how how to how to calculate that, I'd I'd be happy to show you that. Um, but remember that that's that's the the deviation that we need to need to determine when when we're processing maps so again it's the percentage from the largest district in this instance would be the green district to the smallest district would be uh, the orange district that's how we determine population deviation and jeff just a, as a point um, we have that center line with the ideal population so generally and correct me if i'm wrong if you get all of those districts to that right around that center line, you should be in pretty good shape yes. because you're getting to the ideal population. And also just know the cities, um, the threshold is a 10% deviation, just as a point, just to keep in the back of your mind as you're as you're drawing these districts. Yes. Okay, so the last tab that I haven't shown you yet, uh, and it's something that again, I needed to fill in the map before I can show you it, is what's called your evaluation tab. And this shows you what your districts are by both uh, total population as well as citizen voting age population. So you can see here, and and you can you can compare this um, by by changing the uh, the the toggles here to compare different uh, categories. So for example, let's say you want to compare the Hispanic voting age. Um, with the African American citizen voting age population, you can change between those and show uh, what each one of your districts are. And again, each one of these sh shows not the existing districts, they show the way that you've drawn your districts. So it will give you um, your, again, your population percentages and your demographic percentages by the way you've drawn your districts in, and that will change. So, for example, if I were to go and you know change change some of these these uh, you know populations here. So, for example, if I added in some more into the uh, you know your the orange district here, you'll see that your population numbers and your evaluation will will change associated with it. So let's say, for example, I'm ready to submit. This is this is the map, and I know we still have some unassigned population. But let's say, for example, I've gotten 
everything down. I've gotten zero on a sign population. I don't have any red areas that I've missed. Let's assume that's the case. How do I submit my map? You'll click on save. And you can either share this, if, if you're absolutely ready to go, you click on share now. You'll type in whatever name you wanna give to your map and then click share to gallery. And you'll see each one of the maps that gets submitted has a five digit code associated with it. So this one is 91611 and you can go back and reference that and those will all get put into the public gallery. If you want to, if you say, hey, I haven't, uh, I'm still not sure, or there's some areas that I wanna go back to at a later time, you can share this, save this as a work in progress, do the same thing, save as draft, and it will get submitted into the, the uh, works in progress as I showed earlier. Once a map gets submitted, you can submit as many maps as you want, but once a, once a map, if you hit share now and share to gallery, that map gets locked and can't, can't get changed. But again, you can submit as many maps as you'd like. So I know that that was probably a pretty quick overview. Um, would be happy to answer any questions that you may have about the process and, and how particularly the, the mapping tool works. Hey Jeff, just before we jump into questions, if you don't mind, I know we show on the evaluation the districts. Mm -hmm. um, there's When you go to data layers, you can also, um, not only can you show current districts, but there's also an option that the district number will show up as well. So yes. um, you see where it says uh, show a numbering for painted districts. So at least you can see that. So that's an option as well. Yep. And uh, lastly, the up there is this lock already drawn districts. Um, in some of the census blocks, it gets kind of tight. If you click that and you already have a district that's completed, if you select that and it's underneath where the, the brush size is, as you're drawing, it will lock that in so you don't take away a census block from that already drawn district. So there's just a couple of features just to think about when you're drawing uh, your maps. So are there questions? Yes, I will get the microphone. How will these maps uh, submitted by citizens be evaluated by the city council? or city personnel? Sure, so the first thing that, that we as NDC will do is go through and make sure that, that number one, they're population balanced, and uh, also make sure that there's no um, Federal Voting Rights Act concerns or whatnot. But as long as, as there's their population balanced and, and there's no, no concerns with either the state or federal laws, we will put those as part of the, uh, the public hearing. So, any, any map that gets submitted, it will be part of the public record. And so usually what we'll do is you'll see a lot of, a lot of cities, you know, I'll give you an example. We just went through the, the process of districting for the city of San Dimas. Um, they're on a December 15th deadline, so they've already completed their process here. We received 38 maps in terms of public submissions. Just because we receive 38 maps doesn't mean that there's 38 unique maps. A lot of them, you'll have a particular theme. So, you know, keep a central district, you know, two north, two south, or, you know, north, south districts, east, west districts. What we'll do is if we start seeing particular themes that, that show up, we'll group those maps together and say, okay, here are all the north, south districts together. Here are all the east, west districts together. So that the council can say, okay, within those, we've got three or four different different types of themed maps, and here are the variations of those. And then we'll use that to, to help kind of begin the conversation with, with how the process will begin. Thank you. Other questions? I'm kind of lost on your racial balance or whatever you want to call it. Because mm -hmm. you had downtown as being highly Asian or whatever it was, I believe. Hispanic. So you want to keep the groups together is what you're saying? You don't want to split them? Yes. Well, then you would have really pretty movable lines is what I'm getting at. You'd go around downtown and put it all in one area instead of having lines. Okay, I got it now. 
Yes. So uh, again, that's that's something that uh, that the council has identified as areas that they'd like to keep together. So that's something uh, again that that could be considered while you're drawing your maps. Well, I, I guess what I'm getting at here is a balance in all the districts of populations of different mm -hmm. populations. You're still going to way heavy in certain districts versus other districts. Yes, and that's that's a good point, and I'm glad you brought that up um, because remember the the population balance is the is a higher ranked right. law than it, it is for um, keeping communities of interest together. And I'll and I'll give you an example. So let's say let's say for example you have a community of interest that gets identified, but that community of interest is so large that if you kept that all together, it would throw a, the population deviation greater than 10%. In that instance, you would say, okay, population balance is a higher ranked criteria than uh, the community of interest is. And so in an instance like that, that would be a time where it would be practicable to split that community of interest. But if, if there isn't that case, then that's something, again, it's a policy choice for both the general public as well as the city council to consider to say, okay, is that something that we want to keep together? Would it be most beneficial keeping that district together in, or keeping that community together in one district for its best representation? Or would it benefit from having multiple representatives? Again, that's a policy choice that we want to get feedback from both you as the general public as well as the city council on as to again how they how that kind of goes into the decision making calculus for drawing your districts. Right, right. I get that. But wouldn't you be looking at a heavily Spanish uh, section with the elected Spanish speakers or whatever? Wouldn't you be segregating at the same time? As if you don't have a racial balance? So so remember the when we when we look at um, protected class voting it's something that we have to consider in the maps. But remember, just just because you maybe have, for example, a, a majority Hispanic seat or a majority Asian American seat, that doesn't guarantee the outcome of the election. It's yeah, just, but you you're going to sure market it that way. If you're running for an office, you're going to be sending out Spanish speaking ballots for some non Spanish speaking ballots. Uh, again, it's not something that, that guarantees an outcome of an election. Else? Other questions about the mapping tool? Um, is there anyone online that is interested in asking a question before we, we move on? Okay. So that concludes the the uh, overview of the, the mapping tool. And um, again, we are, we will be looking if, if we are going to have maps that we will consider for the third hearing. We would appreciate that if you can uh, get those submitted by January 3rd of next year um, so that we have time to process them and we can get again get those considered in the public hearing in uh, middle of January. So with that, um, again, I'll hang out for a few more minutes uh, if there are other questions, but uh, that concludes the the overview of both the tools and the presentation, and again, appreciate the time this evening. Um, and I'll, I'll just make one last comment on turning it in. Jeff mentioned the tagging it as well. Um, this link that you see here as a redundancy measure, just to make sure that we for, for certain have your map. Um, if you copy that and if you email that to us to districts at cityofchino.org, and that's included on the instructions online as well, um, then it'll be located in two places and we'll for certain have that. But um, both options work, but it's just as a redundancy measure. And for the uh, online folks, um, if, if you don't have any questions, I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the webinar for now. But if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us at districts at cityofchino.org or you can call us at 909-334-3338. Thank you.